what you can see here is that the Fahrenheit to Celsius calculator involves taking 32 away from the number of Fahrenheit and multiplying by 5 over 9. So here we actually have the function in PLSQL. We've taken 32 off. We parenthesize it to make sure of the precedence because the multiply has higher precedence than minus. We don't necessarily need the parentheses around the 5 over 9 because multiplication and division should have the same level of execution. And what we've done at the end is we've rounded the results so we don't get a huge floating point number. Now let's deal with this procedure step by step. Let's first of all take the actual procedure creation and copy and paste it. So we're logged into concerts. We're going to create this function. Now what it's actually done at this stage is it's submitted the function and it's compiled it as well. I generally just compile it anyway, just to make sure. And now we'll execute the procedure. And we get lots of results. 50 Fahrenheit is 10, 70 is 21, 90 is 32, etc., etc. 32 is 0, which is freezing. What's the point of all this? The point of all this is there is no function in Oracle that does this. Obviously, why would you need a Fahrenheit to Celsius converter? The point of all this is that you can build your own functions. How the function is coded, the syntax, all that sort of stuff to do with PLSQL, we will get into much later on. For now, you know that you can create your own functions. Let's go and take a more detailed view of some of the types of functions. Single row functions, string functions. String functions do things with strings. They take in strings and they pass out strings. A string is a piece of text, a number of characters. In this case, I've got the function init cat, which means set the first letter in each word in the string to a capital. So, lowercase, my name is Joe, becomes my name in Joe, with the first letter in each word capitalized. Number functions. Number functions do things with numbers. For instance, as we have here, we're raising the number 2 to the power of 3, which means 2 times 2 times 2 is equal to 8. 2 times 2 is 4 times 2 is 8. Dates. Date functions do things with dates. For instance, add months. Take the date 18th of January 2003 and add 3 months, and we get the 18th of April. Other functions. There are other or miscellaneous functions, many of them, which do not necessarily do anything with number strings or dates, not specifically or explicitly anyway. Here we have an example called NVL. NVL simply replaces null values with the specified value, which can be a numeric or a string. Data type conversion functions. Once again, the same function, converting the number 1 million to a character string, passing it through a common delimited format, does meet the number 1 million delimited by commas. Let's take a look at group functions. We will deal with group functions later on when dealing with the group by clause. At this point, I just want to describe what they are and what they do. There are actually two types of group functions. The first one is an aggregate group function. The second one is an analytical group function. Now, the most simple difference between the two is that the aggregate will produce a single row, whereas the analytical function will actually produce a number of rows. However, the aggregate produces a group in the same way that the analytical function actually produces multiple groups all it does is that the analytical function breaks the single group into a number of subsets. As we can see from here, once again, we've selected the count from the category and we've come up with 34 rows returned. The analytical function actually analyzes data, groups it into sections, and it would return multiple rows per group but it would not necessarily return a single row from a summary of multiple rows.